hit likes, signal likes, and braking lights. Have you wondered what goes on within the car for the lights to flash and shine? Let's find out more from the perspective of energy transfers and energy stores. Hi, it's me again, Mr. Yap, Master Teacher for Physics. What's in a car is pretty complicated. So to simplify things, we can use a simple electric circuit with a battery, a light bulb, a switch, and connecting wires to analyze the scenario. Before we do an energy analysis, remember that it is important to clearly define the object of interest and the initial and final states of an event. Let's begin by defining our object of interest to be the battery alone. I'm going to place the battery inside this O here to show that we are only considering the battery before and after the switch is closed. Before the switch is closed, there is no electric current flowing through it. We also know that there is energy in the chemical store of the battery. So I'm going to use these energy cubes to show the chemical store. I will assume that there is initially 8 units of energy in the battery. This shows the initial state for our object of interest. Now, when the switch is closed, an electric current flows through the entire circuit. Energy is transferred out of the battery through this electric current. This card is used to show transfer of energy by an electric current. I'm going to place it over the energy cubes and slide it out of our object of interest. This represents one unit of energy in the chemical store of the battery that is transferred out of the battery electrically by an electric current to the rest of the circuit. Let us now define our final state as our battery having only half the amount of energy in its chemical store. This means that from the original 8 cubes, only 4 remain at the final state. Let us look at another way to represent this. This chart shows the amount of energy present at the initial state of the battery and this one shows the amount of energy at the final state. When we view them side by side, we see that there are 8 units of energy in the chemical store initially and only 4 units in the same store at the end. To account for the difference in the amount of energy between the initial and final states of our object of interest, I use this transfer card and chips to show that 4 units of energy was transferred out of the battery electrically through an electric current. Notice that no energy was created or destroyed in the initial and final states. We had 8 units at the initial state for our object of interest. Of these 8 units, we have 4 units left in our object of interest at the final state. The remaining 4 units were transferred out. The total energy in the start and end states are the same. Now let's do the energy analysis again. This time, we will choose the light bulb as our object of interest. We will consider what happens to the amount of energy in the light bulb before and after the switch is closed. Once again, let me place the object of interest inside this big O. Before the switch is closed, there is no electric current flowing through the light bulb and so it does not light up. However, we know that there is some energy in the internal store of the light bulb. I'm going to define the initial state as the light bulb with one unit of energy in the internal store before the switch is closed. So, I will use my energy cubes again to show the internal store. After the switch is closed, an electric current flows through the light bulb. Energy from the battery is transferred electrically to the internal store of the light bulb. To represent this happening, I will use this energy transfer card. I've covered four energy cubes with the card and slipped them into our object of interest to show that the energy is being transferred by electric current. After that, I will remove the card and rotate the cubes to show the internal store. Now, there are five units of energy in the internal store of the light bulb. 
Let us use the cubes and cuts to illustrate the final state. I've covered three energy cubes with the energy transfer by propagation of waves cut and slid them out of our object of interest to show that the energy is being transferred by waves. Let us define the final state as the light bulb having a higher temperature and more energy in its internal store compared to the initial state. There is another way to represent this. When we view the initial and final states of the light bulb side by side, we see that there is one unit of energy in the internal store initially. At the final state, there are two units of energy in the internal store. There is more energy in our object of interest at the final state because energy was transferred electrically to it from the battery. Notice that four units of energy was transferred to the light bulb. However, not all was transferred to the internal store of the light bulb. Notice that energy was also transferred out of our object of interest. Three units are transferred to the surroundings through the propagation of waves in the form of light and infrared radiation. Hence, we are left with two units in the internal store. Again, no energy was created or destroyed in the process. Let's account for the amount of energy together. We have one unit at the initial state and then we have four units transferred into our object of interest. That makes a total of five units. Of these five units, we have two units in our object of interest at the final state and three units that were transferred out. We have analyzed the battery and light bulb individually. Now, let's consider the whole circuit as the object of interest. We will keep the initial and final states the same, that is, before and after the switch is closed. At the initial state, before the switch is closed, the battery has energy in the chemical store, while the light bulb has energy in the internal store. At the final state, after the switch is closed for some time, the amount of energy in the chemical store of the battery decreased to half its original amount, while the amount of energy in the internal store of the light bulb increased. Some energy is also transferred out of the object of interest through the propagation of waves in the form of light and infrared radiation to the surroundings. Notice that we did not mention about the energy transferred electrically from the battery to the light bulb. That is because we are considering the whole circuit as the object of interest. We only need to think about the total energy transfers in and out of the whole circuit and the amount of energy in each energy store at the initial and final states of the event. If we look at the initial and final states of the circuit side by side, we see 8 units of energy in the chemical store and 1 unit in the internal store on the left and 4 units of energy in the chemical store and 2 units in the internal store on the right. We also see that 3 units of energy are transferred through the propagation of waves in the form of light and infrared radiation. You may have noticed that one of the main differences between the first two cases and this case is that we do not consider the energy transferred electrically. Again, this is due to the choice of the object of interest. To round up the learning from this video, let's go through some of the key points. The choice of the object of interest affects the analysis of the event in terms of the energy transfers and energy stores involved. Energy can be transferred electrically through an electric current and through propagation of waves. Energy is not created or destroyed in any process. The sum of the amount of energy in an object of interest at the initial state and the amount of energy that is transferred in is equal to the sum of the amount of energy that is transferred out and the amount of energy at the final state. Now it's time for you to explore more examples on your own.